What's up, Rozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to the FNAF Pizzaplex timeline so far. This is a timeline that discusses the events of the Pizzaplexes that we see in Security Breach and in the Tales from the Pizzaplex book series. Now this video is updated all the way to the book Somnophobia, so if you haven't read those stories yet, then you may want to go to my previous timeline video where it's only updated up to haps. And of course, if you're watching in the future, there may already be a timeline video out for some mechanophobia and the other stories and maybe even ruin uh, later down the line. You guys really liked the last timeline video, so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail today, uh, especially with the information that we get from somnophobia. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, Pressure was quite a mind-blowing story because we got a lot of information about springlock suits and, of course, we got a first-person perspective of a springlock incident. We learned that springlock suits were actually discontinued very shortly after being used. This was most likely due to the multiple simultaneous springlock failures. However, in FNAF 4's minigames, the springlock suits are still being used. And seeing as the missing children's incident would have to be after the springlock failures, this debunks the missing children's incident being in 1983 and most likely places it in 1985. The springlock suits are discontinued and eventually Fredbear's is closed. The focus is then shifted onto Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Fredbear and Friends is then rebranded to Freddy and Friends. As seen in B7, the Freddy and Friends TV show seems to have corrupted the mind of at least Billy, but possibly other children too. This means the show stopped being aired and uh, the shows including Freddy and Friends on tour would be archived in the Fazbear Entertainment archives. When Billy watches Freddy and Friends, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is open, so it would have to be between 1983 and 1985, if we're saying that's when the missing children's incident takes place. He is crushed on his 16th creation day, so I'm placing this story from 1984 to 2000 with an uncertainty of one year. Skipping to way later in the timeline, the rogue indie developer named Steve Snodgrass creates three FNAF games to make fun of the rumours before being killed off by Fazbear Entertainment themselves. Silver Parasol Games later took these games and made virtual reality versions of them as we see in FNAF VR. This is probably why FNAF 4 in FNAF VR was titled Night Terrors because they were based off of and inspired by the story of Help Wanted with the Tormentor Steve and the Observation Rooms as well theorised to be the room in FNAF 4. Following the events of, or similar to the events of the Man in Room 1280, depending on if you're Stitchline Games or not, Afton makes his way into circuit boards at the Fazbear Entertainment Distribution Centre and Daniel Rocha gets his hands onto them before handing them over to Stephen Wilson and scanning them into the VR game. This lets Afton out into a fast spreading virus named Glitchtrap. Jeremy plays the VR game and he takes his own life to avoid Glitchtrap's possession. Tape Girl is then the next to playtest the game and because the game is being transferred from one development team to another, she decides to split him into 16 pieces when Vanessa, the player of FNAF VR, gets a hold of all 16 tapes, Glitchtrap is fully reformed and is able to take over her mind. She makes a bunny mask and communicates to Glitchtrap through it. Lewis notices some of the weird stuff that Vanessa has been searching for and she receives company mandated therapy. Whoever patient 46 is, my guess is it's just Vanny or it's Tape Girl, ends up murdering all of these therapists and Vanessa lies about her past, forcefully telling Elizabeth Afton's story under the control of Glitchtrap. Now before we get onto the construction of the Mega Pizzaplex, Cleithrophobia states that it was a brand new Pizzaplex, meaning there was probably one before it. Out of pure speculation, I'm going to assume that a Pizzaplex was built and this is the one that contained Lally's game. Uh, the scaffolding falls, Daniel is killed, and, uh, and Lally escapes with Cade. In the FNAF VR Holiday DLC, we see that a new location is being built and finally we have made it to the construction of the Mega Pizzaplex. This location is being built on top of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place from FNAF 6. This is previously Fredbear's Family Diner, so my theory is that in the future epilogues or in Ruin, they're going to find Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals. 
The pizza place is being made into a tourist attraction. The Glamrock animatronics are imported, but the bunny endo looks like it has previously been in a fire. Gil reprograms it to break their heads and limbs off of the endos from FNAF 6, but instead it breaks his and the limbs of several other workers too. A group of high schoolers investigate the construction site and get trapped inside the location, noticing 11 decapitated human bodies on the floor. They hear a metal scraping sound and the endo makes the lights flicker as a method of startling the group to move. The endo also hides in empty suits. Nick and Hope are decapitated and the rest of the group runs away. Of course, this is only three epilogues so far. Uh, we are unsure how this might continue, but my guess is that the endo is becoming burn trap um, later on down the line. Five months away from the opening of the Mega Pizzaplex, Grady is killed in the vertical tubes of Ballora's fitness and flex, as we see in Cleithrophobia. His friends would find him but not help him due to the potential consequences, so other construction workers find him and shut down Ballora's area, like we see in the prologue of the story. As we see in Under Construction, the Mega Pizzaplex finally opens up in May of a year. It is believed that this year would be 2029 because if you do the math on the quarterly magazines in Security Breach, you'll find that the Pizzaplex had to be open for a set amount of time. In this case, we find it to be five or six years. Uh, and if Security Breach happens in 2035, that would place the opening of the Pizzaplex in May of 2029. Somewhere between 2029 and 2035, it is good to mention that frailty happens, but that is all the information about timeline placement that we get from that story. And on top of that, I would like to mention right now that the main four animatronics are of course, Glamrock Freddy, Glamrock Chica, Roxanne Wolf, and Glamrock Bonnie. Monty is currently just a side character. In the prologue of Cleithrophobia, we see the Mega Pizzaplex as it has first been opened in May, signified by the smoked dome of the AR booth after the events of the real world in Under Construction. The dome is surrounded by workers, Maya is killed by the machine, and the AR booth is then shut down. Now there's no easy way to place some of the stories in this timeline, but we know that perhaps and pressure have to be pretty early on due to most of the attractions appearing in other stories but not in Security Breach. In Pressure, the kids in the group are all high schoolers and they mention how they are at the Pizzaplex before they head off to the end of their senior year. This usually is at the end of May or like beginning mid of June, um, so if my sources are correct that is, I don't live in America. Uh, so I'm, I'm just guesstimating June 2029 for Haps and Pressure. Freddy's Fortress and the roleplay area are then shut down after the occurrences in these stories. Eventually, at some point, Vanessa is transferred from a senior IT representative at Fazbear Entertainment Incorporated to the Mega Pizzaplex as a head security guard. The job interviewer said they would not recommend her due to lack of prior qualifications, but she is hired from someone higher up anyway. At some point, a huge late night meeting was called for all staff with the mentioning that there will be cake. It is implied that these people were slaughtered by Vanessa's split personality, Vanny, and replaced by staff bots. Looking to rebuild Afton, Vanny decides to shatter Glamrock Bonnie so that she can use his parts, especially his claws. She uses Monty so that he is also able to get what he wants, to be on the main stage. Eventually he would also want to take out Glamrock Freddy so that he could be center stage. Now all we know timeline wise about Somnophobia is that Sam comes across a bus stop and sees an ad for the mega pizzaplex with Glamrock Freddy, Glamrock Chica, Roxanne Wolf and Montgomery Gator. So with this knowledge the story has to take place after Glamrock Bonnie is replaced but of course probably before security breach. In Security Breach, we also find out there are missing children, and it is implied that they are all victims of Vanny. One of these children seems to be Gregory, and he will eventually be rebuilt into a robot, potentially with old staff bot parts. And of course, this all leads to the main events of Security Breach, where Gregory and Freddy team up and discover the thing underneath Roxanne Raceway draining power from the Pizzaplex, and that is Afton as Burn Trap. Security Breach can only take place in certain years due to the math from whiteboards shown around the Pizzaplex, but 2035 sounds like the best placement for it. 
There's also a set of balloons that says yay 40, possibly referencing 40 years after Afton was springlocked in 1995, like the novel trilogy. Though it's unknown how the story will continue, it's safe to assume Ruin DLC will take place with this new protagonist exploring the ruined pizzaplex after the Afton ending of Security Breach. And of course, the final event is the main story of Lally's game, which supposedly takes place a lot further than everything else in the timeline. As we discussed, Cade was only a child when he played Lally's game at the mini pizzaplex, but during the main events of the story, he is an adult. My guess is that the story takes place in the 2040s, but there is currently no way we are able to tell. And that is the timeline of events that I could put together regarding the history and the future of the Pizzaplex. Tell me in the comments how right you believe I am and make sure you subscribe so that you can see when my next Pizzaplex timeline comes out. Thank you guys so so much for watching and I'll see you later. Goodbye.